In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get your beautiful moth Amata Mogadarensis. We will start with the eggs, to the caterpillar, to the pupa, and finally to the beautiful moths. I show you how I did it, and then you can do it the same way. All right, I have these eggs right at the side of a cricket box. Maybe you I have some that have been sent to you. I want them to be in a closed container without any holes where I can control them every day. Something like this, for example, or a small marmalade jar. However, whatever you do with these eggs, you have to be very careful because they have such a thin yeah, skin, I would say. So it's pretty easy to destroy them and if you destroy them you will not get any caterpillars. So what I do is I take a small stick and I make it wet at the beginning, not dripping wet but just like a bit of water on top of the stick and then I gently come close to them until they stick to the stick like this. Then if I do everything right I can take them to the next container Again, be careful, you can still break them and they will let go automatically and now they are right there. And just keep on doing this. Don't lose your patience because we want to move as many of these eggs as we can to the next container. There we go. Cricket box is empty, and in my marmalager, right there, we have these eggs. As with all eggs, if they are too dry, they die out, and then the caterpillars die before they are even born. So, we don't want this to happen. I prefer to breathe on the eggs once a day. With breathing on them once a day, you achieve them to, of course, be humid. And in addition, you will allow the air to circulate and that's pretty important too. That's literally everything you have to do. Just breathe on the eggs once a day and close the lid again and then wait. It's been two days now and it's hard to see but in the middle there are some eggs that are turning yellow into the color of orange. So we see something's going on there. It's been seven days now, and as you can see, they turn more orange every day. A few days later, these eggs turned dark. You see, they are pretty dark. And it means we have a countdown to hatch. It takes about one day from now until we get tiny little caterpillars. There we go. No words needed. Look at them crawling all over the space exploring the world. Down there, there is salad I put in as the eggs were black, but I will change it with some fresh salad and then I will remove the older one because the caterpillars will need food every day. They will not stop eating unless they mold. You can be proud if you did it that far. You raised eggs to caterpillars. Isn't that amazing? And the funny thing is, although they just hatched, look at their fuzziness. They have so much hair. Now the journey of our caterpillars start and we will watch them grow day by day. Don't be confused by the size difference in the beginning. So when they hatch, they are very small, but then they eat, they get bigger. And if they mold, they get even bigger. So yours will be as big as mine at the end of the day. Awesome what we are able to record these caterpillars they are taking a rest they ate enough and <laughs> right there you see a small caterpillar trying to find food but all the others they ate enough and they are lying there now preparing for mold as the days go by as you can see our caterpillars make yeah quite a mess everywhere and we don't want them to get 
and to spread any diseases and in addition of course we want it to be clean so I could just rehouse them into a new or a similar clean enclosure but I decided because they grown so much and they are quite a lot to use this cricket box without any ventilation holes because there are still some caterpillars that have the size with which they could get through the holes. I put in some lettuce to feed on. I tried out, you can use different kinds of lettuce. That's just fine, they will eat it. Now I opened the old enclosure. Oh, you see, yeah, it needs to be cleaned. Uh, be careful because they are very fast compared to other caterpillars and you don't want those to get out of the enclosure at the same time and um, what I used to rehouse them is the same stick I used for rehousing the eggs and then I can push caterpillars that are like right here right over and the others yeah I will show you how I do it so I open it again and all the caterpillars fall down because that's like their defending mechanism they just fall down if you disturb them and then they start to crawl all over the place and we have one right at the top what I can do is yeah now you can see him. I can push him into the new enclosure if I'm careful nothing will happen and as you can see all the others start just to crawl into the same direction so what we can do is just give them a boop and another boop yeah and that works perfectly boop. don't forget to look at the caterpillars you just threw into the new enclosure you don't want them to crawl out There are still some inside, but I will show you how to get them into new, the new enclosure too. Look at them. They are so fluffy after the first two molds. So fluffy. And they will get even fluffier, believe me. So what I do now is I open up the old enclosure and I start to remove old lettuce. So we can see the caterpillars, even the small ones, way better. Oh, I accidentally took out a caterpillar. So I removed almost all the old lettuce and now I can start to yeah, try to Put the last ones in yeah this was the first just give them a little shake like i said it's a defending me mechanism they would probably let let go of everything they are attached to let's see oh well, four or five are still in there two yeah, okay three or four one no still five <laughs> so there were more inside than i thought looks great it's because we disturbed them that's why they are crawling all over the space and yeah but they will eat the lettuce they will all be at the same spot after a while yeah i forgot a caterpillar right there but of course i will put him to his friends but then we're good to go make sure to not forget any in this mess and then clean up this enclosure and you can use it for something else next update they are through their third and fourth mold and they are <laughs> way too much for this small box so I will split them and clean them this is the end result so I was able to separate one cricket box full of caterpillars into four cricket boxes and I tried to separate them uh, with a size so here we have I would say uh, the middle ones 
and over there we have the bigger ones and right here the not small but the smallest of all of them so um we need letters some pieces for you for you for you and for the last box as easy as that now we have to wait again give them salad if they need and we wait for them to mold what I want to tell you now, when your caterpillars had their last mold and they are very big, as big as this one here, give them enough lettuce, they are very hungry and I would suggest to separate them again so they don't get uh, bitten by the others. Believe me, I'm telling you by experience, they even eat pupas. And we don't want this to happen. There are different possibilities when it comes to pupating and I want to show you most of them. One is, as we can see, that more than one caterpillar tries to pupate. Right there, the three, they are hanging there in their webbing, I would say, and they try to pupate. The other one is disturbing them. Let me just tell them. Okay, I just pushed the bad one down. So, um, and on the left, there's another one trying to pupate. So, it's the easiest if we let those four caterpillars in this box and remove the last two right there. It will be less stressful that way. So, on the right, I opened the lid of another box and then I put this one next to it. Now I will open it on one side because on the others uh, they are holding with their web onto it and I don't want to disturb them. And then I will lure the remaining caterpillars with this stick into the new box. So I poked them um, at the end of the caterpillar, at their bottom I would say, until they got yeah, right here at the top of the corner and if I continue booping it then it should go into the new box that's right next to it. And don't freak out if they fall down on the table. As I told you in the beginning they are fast, yes, but it's handleable. Poked it again and there we go. No, not right there, yes. Oh, we almost did it. Okay, now I remove the gap between the boxes and now it should work out. As easy as that. And I'll do that with the other one too. And just another quick information so you don't freak out when noticing that all your caterpillars lose their hair. I mean, right here. This looks weird compared to those fuzzy things. But that's another indicator they are going to pupate. So what do we do now if we have right here this one trying to pupate and there are many caterpillars inside disturbing it and maybe eating it. I don't want this to happen and yeah from bad experience I take a small container with um, soft paper on the ground like some tissue and I hold it right under it and then I will softly and gently boop it inside. We should not disturb them. But I mean, what is better, disturbing them and still saving it or just letting it die because the others eat it? And I never had back the experience doing this. All the caterpillars I removed when they were preparing to pupate, they turned out to pupate successfully. Now I close the lid and just wait for this one to pupate in here where it's safe.
Now it finished webbing and spinning all over the place and as you can see it appears much smaller than it used to be. Now it really is preparing to pupate. There is a lot going on in this caterpillar right now and in this stage you should not disturb it. For example you could use a bigger box but that's not needed necessarily. I had great experiences with this paper. You just make balls out of it and then they can pupate right there and under them, in them. For example, I have this big guy. I have washed my hands before handling and he's as big as I would say that he wants to pupate. So I give him into this box. I will see if he tries to pupate in the next hours otherwise I will give him some lettuce in this corner. After I noticed the caterpillar was wandering around about one day but it was still not eating it took this corner and yeah yeah right there you can see how it's spinning and how it got yeah tinier as I showed you just separated when you see that it got big enough I think these are all the methods you need to know and it works perfectly fine. Transformation into pupa successful. I was even able to film how they mold the last time and how the pupa is inside of the caterpillar. Since this one already is separated and it is alone, I just remove this like this and then the salad so it does not rot or mold. And after approximately two weeks, I even noticed it's about 18 days at room temperature, but right now it's pretty hot. so. It could go quicker and then the moth, our Amata Mogadorensis, will hatch and then it will be in this container and then we will see what we're doing with it. I like to put them into a net cage. You can buy it online. Now as we're waiting for our beautiful moths to emerge, I want to show you two things. First of all, now some lighting. I have to get closer, yeah, like this. What do you see? We see some brownish over there, some brownish pupa, and we see more black ones. And if you take a light and, yeah, light it at the pupa, you can see the dark ones, they have like even orange or red spots over here. So what you uh, read on the internet is when they are black they are dead but with this species this surprised me really because I thought oh no they die they are not going to emerge but they are getting black when they are almost ready to come out of their pupa so that's that's how you can tell they are almost done and what I do then is I separate them into like a flying net cage or something else where they can live the rest of their lives. Because if they are black, they are going to emerge in the next two days. It's easier to tell if you see them by yourself and not through the phone, but right here we have like four or five ones I will separate. They've been moved into those cricket boxes now and when they emerge I will try to sex them and then put them into the right uh, flying cage. Of course I could put everyone in there but I like to have a controlled breeding so I know who is carrying eggs and who will lay eggs. When I'm talking about sexing let me show you how the best way to sex is even if we have only pupa. Just look at it. I think there are almost no words needed. On the right I put the yeah, the, 
the ones I think are going to be females and on the left the males just because I noticed of course we can't say for sure which pupa is going to be male and which female but um, there are, I have not seen any female being smaller than any male but I have seen some males being as big as some females and if you take the smallest of all pupa you're pretty good to go with a male and if you take the largest pupa you're good to go with a female right here we have like it's hard to tell from size because they are in the middle but those you really see they are huge and then they are so tiny i did not zoom out or anything female male i would say this is the best way to tell of course you can see which is uh, bigger when they emerge but th this is just what you can also tell by the size of the pupa the hardest thing is if you have two middle sized pupa and then you have almost no idea whether male or female you could tell it by the shape of their like abdomen when they emerge but that's hard and I never was successful with this but we will see when they emerge then I can show you what I mean that's just what I really want to show you if you like to separate males from females and so on or just want to know why ones are bigger and the others are so small it's a huge difference something i forgot to mention wherever you put your pupa it has to if it emerges it has to have the ability to climb up and spread its wings it will pump blood into the wings and they will become bigger always keep that in mind so your enclosure where you put in the pupa is not too small or too tight that's my supposed to be female flying cage because i put in the hugest pupa and i put in a plant so it is not as light that it can fall down or anything because otherwise without this plant it would be very easy to fall down in addition the plant is also a great thing for them to spread their wings so they don't need to climb up the walls of this flying cage it even has this clear side for great view and look at this for great filming the female or supposed to be female the wings have become bigger for sure and it's only been about 10 minutes but that was the size it has straight after hatching since we have a living moth a living creature of mother nature it has to eat or more specifically we should say drink because they can't eat this species at least what i did is i made a mixture right here with water and sugar the ratio is about one sugar and two water i mix this until i couldn't see any sugar anymore and then i can take this pipette First of all, I take something like this marmalade lid or you could uh, use the top of the bottle too and you can put some cotton in there or some tissue and then you can use your pipette to uh, put the sugar water in there just so they don't drown but they can drink from it. So I just take the mixture of sugar water and let the cotton soak it in and just simply renew it every day you don't have to take out the cotton every day but give it uh, sugar water every day so it can soak in and there will be the day where it's hard because the sugar like hardens and then you can change the whole cotton but you don't have to change the cotton daily and now i simply put it into the net cage right here and if i want to renew it i can do it like this and then close it again right here you can see the comparison to my pinky finger they aren't huge at all but uh, if you compare them to the small males if they hatch i can show you they are huge and beautiful
Now two days after our first female hatched, look, we have a male. Right there he crawled out of his pupa and there's still one black pupa. Maybe it's going to hatch today too. And he's doing the same as the female. His wings are still very tiny and he needs to pump blood into them. So they are huge and he looks like a real moth. I put some cotton into some sort of a water dish and then he can drink there too, like the females. And let me show you some odd thing that just happened. This is a cricket box where I put in the last remaining caterpillar. It was still very tiny in comparison to the others. I mean, they all pupated and I thought the caterpillar will become twice the size until it pupates. But look at this. It just pupated right now. And it's, it's so small. This will become a very tiny male. And I've got to show you another very interesting thing. Right here I um, have put, it's not the one I showed you I separated, but it's a different one. I mean, I bred a lot of those caterpillars. So it hatched like two or three days ago and it already got some sugar water right there. And let me show you the abdomen. So we try to sex it. Of triangle form. So it's not, it is round, yeah, but it is not flat at all, especially the sides. But I mean, it's still a theory, because sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's a female, and then I see how it does not lay eggs, but the other one, it mated with laid eggs, so what I thought was a male turns out to be f female, and the other way around. If you take the biggest ones and the tiniest ones, you're pretty good to go. That's what I would recommend. I have not found a better way to tell it. I'm sorry, if you have any ideas or you have some new experiences or you found out something, then please let me know. And this is the newly hatched one. We don't see this kind of triangle, it's just flat. And that's what I think they are males. Another method to tell it's a female it's the first time I'm recording this and I'm, I'm seeing it. This is how the female releases pheromones to tell the boys I'm here, I want to mate. Wow, I've never filmed it and I've never seen it by myself before. So we have these big ones where I think they are females and they have kind of sharp and triangle formed abdomen. And we have most of the time tiny males with flat abdomen. And I have another very strong argument that this one is for sure a female. Do you see those tiny white dots? These are eggs. These are 100% for sure eggs. I did not mate her. That's another thing I noticed when breeding Amata Mugadarensis. So it seems like females lay unfertilized eggs. So don't panic if you have eggs and you don't want to have eggs. If you did not breed your female, I mean, there is nobody inside. There's no possibility she made it. It is common for them to lay unfertilized eggs. Great thing to know, I think. And from everything we know right now, it should not be a problem, I guess, to breed them. We take the biggest ones, um, maybe with a triangled abdomen or even a female that laid unfertilized eggs. We put it together with a very tiny male with a flat abdomen and then there should be some mating action. Let's do that. On the top you see our supposed to be male and I put him right on top of the cricket box where our female or for sure female is in and of course I can wait until it crawls down and I could in addition make him crawl down by using some sort of stick or so but I guess the simple way is just to wait. Missing the pairing is not a possibility because they are mating for hours. 
that means I will be able to show you when they made and how it looks like. Now I got both moths in one box and we just have to wait until they made. And another female hatch right there. We have two females which have spread their wings completely right there at the top. And if you look at the bottom right where the pupae are, there's some liquid already dried. There's no need to worry. It's just the liquid that comes out when they hatch. That's completely normal. Here you can see this is how they look while mating. So they are totally like combined to each other and it can take several hours. I even had one pairing that took, yeah, it took about two days and not just about. It was exactly 48 hours, but most of them don't last that long. But when they are combined, one wants to go in the one direction and the other in the opposite. So that's not just time consuming, it's pretty much energy they consume. So now I'll give them some cotton with sugar water. Now they got their cotton with sugar water right there. I don't know whether you realize, but there they are mating. And right here in this corner, I noticed some eggs and not just some. These are more than just a couple of eggs where I would say they are unfertilized. So that could mean, I mean, first of all, they are unfertilized and it's just many unfertilized eggs. But it also could be that they mated once and I missed it. So I did not see them mating and now they are mating the second time. Both could have happened. So now we're waiting for them to end pairing and then I can show you how to separate them again. And we're almost done with this guide. It's been less than a day now and as we can see they are not mating. They stopped mating so they finished. On the right we have the female and right here we have the male and we want to separate them now so the female is alone and the male does not disturb her. It's simply easier to handle that. So just tilt it like that so it's easier for him to walk and then use a stick to poke him into the new box. As you can see it worked. Um, I put the lid down there so, so, so the female does not escape. And now I can press it together and just put the other lid on top of the female. And you see, they are separated. That's what I wanted to do. And then, of course, I can put the male to the other males. And I let the female in there so she can lay her eggs. And when this beautiful girl has laid some eggs in here, we have our first self-bred eggs and... We are going to have our own caterpillars, everything you ever wanted. This is our beautiful female we paired yesterday and today. So just one day after the pairing, look what we got. The eggs on the right are those where we did not know whether they are unfertilized or whether they already had a pairing. But right there on the left, it's a whole bunch of eggs these must be fertilized because she laid them after mating. This is a close-up from one side, but as you already saw, um, she laid like several layers. So it's more eggs than you can count on this footage. And in addition, we got some more over here, right at the top on the lid. So there we have our female drinking. She's using like kind of a straw, I would say. I was even able to record how she laid that eggs. I never saw it before, but right here I recorded it. You can see how she like uses the thing we already used to sex her, which come out and in and it stayed outside and then she was able to lay eggs. I let her finish drinking and I watched whether she continues laying eggs but no she didn't uh, if we separate her it can be that she will continue laying eggs but most of the time it's not that much they lay about 100 to 150 eggs average egg amount i counted so in general that's what you can expect but i already had some females not laying many eggs at all like 
10 or 20, so this can disappoint you, but in average it's much more. Since we know there are some eggs over here, I'm very careful when removing the lid. So just like this, and then I do it like when there was a male inside, then just tilt it a bit and poke her into the new box so I can have the eggs for myself. This was pretty difficult because she was flying all over the place the whole time, but I did it. She's in her new box and I got all the eggs there. And now you should know what you're going to do because I already started with the eggs in this video. That means our guide is complete. I hope you could learn something new from what I filmed in the last weeks. If you still have any questions about this beautiful moth and breeding it, feel free to comment and I try my best to help you.